Well, hello, good morning. Welcome to episode four of the Our Service ACM Trainings weekly webinar. Uh, and what a week it's been. Uh, first thing I should say is a happy a Good Friday. And the second thing I need to say is happy a Good Up. And uh, let me just stop that sound repeating in the background. There we are. Back with you again without that echoey sound. That's the excitement of live television, eh? Things he didn't anticipate happening, happening. So as I was saying, happy Good Friday. First of all, happy Easter, everybody. And the second thing I need to say is uh, happy second Dress Up Friday, launched live from the ACM training home office last week. I fear as if I may have made a rod for my own back. Not quite sure how many people are taking part in the fun, but the idea of Dress Up Friday is that it's the antidote to not being dressed up when we're working from home every other day of the week. So it's the kind of opposite, if you like, of Dress Down Friday. And today you'll see the uh, snazzy shirt. I'm already beginning to scrape the sartorial barrow, barrel uh, and, and the George Melly uh, lookalike hat um, covering the rather hideous do-it-yourself uh, haircut that uh, happened uh, last weekend and will take uh, one or two um, days yet to, uh, to grow out. So if you are going to take part in uh, dress up Friday where well, here's the hashtag we'd like you to use that hashtag to post your pictures to social I'm told that there may be a South African contingent posting pictures later today um, and I'd encourage you to stick your pictures to Facebook to Twitter elsewhere on the social web anywhere you can think of and we'll show a selection of those on uh, next Friday's owl service uh, webinar reasonably short um, webinar today uh, because it is Good Friday and the sun's shining and people want to um, get out into their gardens if they're lucky enough to have a garden or, or certainly chill out and not be too uh, worky and work related. Uh, so we'll, we'll crack on. Just one thing I want to do to start with is, is to uh, recap on some um, security concerns that were raised a couple of episodes back. People were saying that Zoom, what we're using to uh, broadcast this right now, uh, is uh, that Zoom perhaps isn't safe, that it could be hacked into, that people could burst into your Zoom meeting and take their clothes off or hijack your web camera or steal your uh, details from your laptop. Uh, and those concerns, I think, were a little overblown, but uh, concerns nonetheless. And Zoom have themselves addressed many of these concerns with a fairly significant update of their uh, software, which uh, we've uh, uploaded to our computers here at, at ACM Trainings Home Office. Uh, and I just want to show you, I can show you quite easily uh, pressing this button here. Uh, and now if you're running the latest iteration of Zoom, you will see uh, along the bottom of the screen, um, a new uh, security tab. I'm just uh, wiggling my mouse pointer over it now. So you've got uh, the microphone and the video uh, in the bottom left hand corner. And then the next one along the bottom is a tab that says security. And if you tap on that, you see that you can do um, certain things that you weren't able to do before. Uh, lock the meeting so that no one can uh, gate crash that meeting. Uh, enable a waiting room so that you can let people in one by one, make sure that they are uh, who you want to come to your meeting. Uh, and you can change uh, some of the settings. So sharing uh, your screen may be fine, but you might not want participants to share their screen because in doing so, uh, they might uh, unintentionally show you and your co-contributors something that you'd really rather not uh, see. Um, so lots of new facilities built into Zoom to address some of those, I think, quite legitimate um, security concerns. Uh, we're using Zoom to conduct our uh, live uh, and interactive online training at ACM. But we do appreciate some of our clients may still uh, nonetheless have concerns about it from a security perspective. So we're happy to deliver training uh, with uh, Skype, with WebEx, with frankly whatever uh, a package, uh, whichever service seems most appropriate to uh, to our clients. So the training uh, can continue. Uh, and at that point, let me bring in um, uh, Bill Lowe. Uh, Bill Lowe uh, is a master trainer. He uh, very often trains big audiences of people at the Master Trainers Institute in Geneva in Switzerland. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that uh, he's with us this morning just to talk through in this episode about some of the strengths, some of the weaknesses of online training versus face-to-face -face training. 
Uh, good morning, Bill. Hopefully you can hear me thanks to the wonders of Zoom technology right now. Certainly can, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Bill, uh, my first question to you is this. Um, is online training necessarily going to be worse than the face-to-face -face stuff that you, uh, in particular, and I also have been used to for uh, a number of years? A and I should add, before Bill answers that question, that he's... Uh, uh, in a good position to be able to answer this question. He worked as a head teacher in, uh, in tertiary education. He's worked as a lecturer in higher education and now, as I say, works as a, as a master trainer uh, working uh, when he can in, um, in Switzerland. So are we losing something by not being face to face with our trainees, do you think? I think one of the, the problems that we have at the moment there, Richard, is that uh, everything's very new, isn't it? And um, there's a, an awful lot of advice, free advice out there on the internet um these are things that are going to be better these are things that are going to be worse and i think it'll, it will take a little while for the whole thing to to settle uh and so the the things which are good will naturally come through and the things that aren't so effective will be uh will be left behind as far as the uh online training is concerned um something which i've noticed is that um a strength of the online training now is that we can really we can really identify the type of training which is basically how can I put this just um, giving information um, because I'm sure we've all been on training courses haven't we where we've come away from a day's training in a nice hotel in the middle of Manchester and just thought well actually all, all that happened today was I was given information which um, I could have been sent because there was no interaction in the training there was no uh, no discussion particularly um, and so I think that uh, that could be a, a good step forward um, in that people will be very, very precise about the kind of training that they're offering and, and the content. Um, so what you're saying is that, uh, in effect, um, it, it, if it's a kind of self-guided how-to style video, um, uh, that's fine, but there's a limitation to that. Uh, this kind of interactive approach that obviously if it is going to be interactive has to happen in real time is potentially closer to replicating the strengths of face-to-face -face training. Um, yes, I mean, obviously, um, as, as we've discussed in the past, I think that uh, when, when we eventually get back to, uh, to normal, I think that there will be a lot of, uh, a lot of people who, who will miss really good top quality face-to-face -face training because of the, uh, the kind of relationships that you can build up within the room, the, uh, the breakout facilities. Uh, I know you can break out on Zoom, but it's not quite the same as being able to chat to someone over coffee, uh, the humor that you get between people, um, and that sort of social interaction uh, that, that you, you can't quite get online. Uh, I'm, I'm sure people will, will work, trying to have a work around on that, but um, you see, uh, with Richard Bradley over in uh, over in Switzerland with the Master Trainer Institute, um, his training has always been very much strongly based on people discussing things in the room, discussing real life problems, um, finding solutions to those problems, um, which you which you can do. Obviously, you can do that online, but then again, you've got all sorts of different um, challenges like different personalities uh, within the room that you can you might be able to you might be able to manage better. On it in a face to face, although we can come back to that in a sec, perhaps. Um, but then you've got that um, that that trust that you get in face to face training. Can you can you build that trust online? That's again, that's something which um, we'd be just scratching at the surface at the moment. Uh, and I guess the big advantage potentially is the time saving, the fuel that's saved flying to a conference in Geneva or driving or taking the train to a conference in, in Manchester or London. So there are some obvious benefits, aren't there? Uh, and I guess the challenge for everybody will be uh, to make sure that the things that are missing uh, from uh, an online training session uh, compared to a face to face one can be uh, made up for as best as possible. And it struck me um, looking at a lot of the kind of how-to videos that have been popping up online, uh, especially over the last two or three weeks, that there's, there's been an awful lot of hand-waving going on in quite a lot of them and, and people saying in a very well-intentioned way that you need to engage your audience by being larger than life. And I, I'm not sure I entirely agree with that, uh, that proposition. I think that um, 
um, in a sense, the skills of an online trainer are going to be, if you like, analogous with those of a uh, of a TV or, or, or smaller screen actor, where there is some, if you like, subtlety uh, in, in facial expression and subtlety in, in hand movement, rather than the kind of larger than life stage actors, uh, analogous to somebody performing at a conference, training at a conference in a face-to-face -face situation where they do need to, to move around and be very animated in order to come across effectively to the people, if you like, in the cheap seats at the back of the auditorium. Uh, and, and, and further to that, I would say that in actual fact, you and I are closer together now, in some respects, we are more intimate, and those who are watching this right now are with us more intimately than they would be in a venue. What do I mean by that? Because it sounds kind of counterintuitive or, or, or paradoxical. Um, we may be, I don't know, where are you now, Bill? Where are you sitting? Where, where do you live? Uh, in Bristol. Okay, so you're in Bristol, I'm in Shropshire, so as the crow flies, I guess that's 70, 80, 100 miles apart, let's say, so we're very, very distant. Um, but actually, I can reach out and, 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 and touch you because you're just as far away as my laptop screen. The people That's watching true. this on YouTube right now can reach out and touch you. They can touch me on their laptop screen. So at the same time, we are more distant. We are also closer to our audience than we would be in a face-to-face -face venue where, mm. I don't know about your training sessions, but I'm far enough away from the audience, certainly not to be able to reach out and touch the people in the cheap seats at the back. So, you know, I think perhaps it's not, as it seems, this online training, not as bad as it seems in, in, in one sense and doesn't need us to be too kind of uh, overblown and showy. Yeah, I mean, you posted a really good clip on LinkedIn the other day uh, with this guy talking about um, getting the passion across when you're, when, you, when you're talking online because otherwise you can come across as being a little bit uh, dull and a little bit flat. But if you've got that passion and that interest in your voice, that's something that you need to need to project because what I'm actually doing now, following your following your guys, I'm I'm sort of gripping the edge of the desk as I'm talking, instead of waving my hands around. So that's uh, hopefully hopefully that's a better effect. But you're quite right because well, if, no, all, no, if, no, if, no, if got, if all you've got is your hand waving around like this, it just it looks slightly bizarre, doesn't it? Well, no, I mean I think one should uh, you know I mean if I put the if I put the wider um, spider shot on here. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with, uh, you know, people, you know, being more expressive and, and, and kind of using their hands. That's kind of fine. But I think, you know, if it's artificial, if we are being told as trainers, uh, as conference hosts, as home workers to, to do things that we're not normally doing, well, then this is going to just look really kind of artificial. If we use our hands a little bit, as I do, well, then fine, use them. But uh, if you don't use them, don't worry about it. I think you're right. There's going to have to be uh, more passion coming across in the in, in the voice. But that's ever it was. If as a trainee you weren't passionate about your trainees, if you weren't passionate and knowledgeable about, about the subject that you were you were training on, well then there would be a problem in a face-to-face -face venue just as much as there would be in uh, in an online situation. So um, maybe some of the maybe some of the concerns are overblown. Oh, I think you're right. Yes, yeah, and um, it, it, it's it's bound to evolve, isn't it? There'll there'll be certain types of training which fit the online uh, method better than face to face, without a doubt. But what at the moment, the... We're, 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 it's it's all very new, isn't it? And people are trying to, I think, they're trying to shoehorn things in where they don't where they don't quite fit. Uh, but then again, through trial and error, good trainers will go. I tell you what, that that didn't really work online. So we need to we need to adjust it in some way. Um, I'll be interested to see the um, um, any white papers and things which come out re with regarding things like um, with the Zoom breakout rooms. How effective? How effective are they? Uh, because if you've actually if you've actually um, sold the course properly, then you're going to have people taking part who want to be there. So if they're left to their own devices for we'll say half an hour to go and do some brainstorming. Um, then they should be able to come back to the rest of the group with some with some uh, really effective work, shouldn't they? Yeah, uh, and the facility that uh, Zoom has, uh, one can um, pre-assign uh, trainees to a breakout room, or one can do it dynamically during the actual meeting. So, you know, some thought would have to be given into making sure that the groups were um, complementary, that you didn't have all the sort of same character in one group and. You know the the extroverts in one group and the introverts in the other. Yeah, no. speaking that would be problematic. And I guess as a trainer, you 
you very often get to see who might work well together in those breakout groups by observing people uh, mm. uh, behaving, you know, in the round in a in, in a kind of live venue, uh, and and that's not something that you're going to be able to see perhaps as uh, no, as no. clearly when you're only yeah. seeing the head and shoulders of somebody, yeah. uh, and they are not interacting uh, in a in a face to face up close and and personal way. Um, you, you, you are obviously in, in a group, you're still going to get the people who want to dominate, for example, and you're going to get those that um, are just quite happy to sit and uh, sit and watch. Um, it's just reacting to those people, isn't it, and bringing them in at the right level so the impact on the group in, in a positive way. Because it, I, I've never had any problem with people who are just quite happy to sit and listen. Uh, because on lots of the training I've been to as a delegate, I'm just quite happy to sit and listen and contribute every now and again whereas um, other people like to be constantly constantly in, uh, involved um, a comment that i heard from a, a a colleague with a different organization i worked with was was saying that yeah i i had someone in a, in a zoom session there were about 30 people and there was one person that seemed to want to uh to dominate so they just put them on to mute which is, <laughs> which is it was a, it's a slightly blunt way of saying would you mind being quiet i mean i realize that but um yeah quite interesting isn't it these, yeah. these different uh, different techniques that people are going to have to gonna have to work on yeah and, and i guess what will happen is that we'll acquire those new skills as as online trainers uh, that oh, yes. may have an, an analogy within sort of face-to-face -face training you know shutting somebody up perhaps a little less bluntly than that uh, the, the waiting room facility, uh, which is pre-enabled with the latest, uh, more secure version right. of Zoom, yes. uh, means you let people in, you know, one by one when you're sure that they are who you were expecting to come along to your, your Zoom meeting. Um, but equally, you can bung somebody out into the waiting room. So I think, you know, for me, the, the waiting room may be, and I haven't had many trainees like this over the 25 years that ACM training has been in business, but just occasionally there are troublemakers that you have to ask to leave. Uh, in order to not uh, derail the training for everybody else, uh, and and the waiting room might just be the cooling off kind of naughty step, if you like, in, yeah, that, in primary that, school terms, where they go and sit and reflect on their behaviour, uh, and you can decide to let them back in if they uh, if they agree yes. to abide by your training house rules, or or they can just take a, a step in the opposite direction, uh, back out if you like, uh, and, and and not come back in from the the waiting room. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that's interesting. What we're sort of touching on now, of course, Richard, is this whole idea of it's a new etiquette, isn't there? A new etiquette of uh, of online training, and um, of course, that needs to work both ways. I mean, we've had quite uh, lengthy and very interesting discussions from a, a trainer's point of view, but um, from a delegate's point of view, people need to be bringing a whole new set of uh, well, not necessarily new, but um, slightly revised protocols, revised ways of behaving. To an online situation um, and again because it's so early I'm really not quite sure what those might be at the moment but um, yeah if you're having to, to, to isolate people if you like I mean that's that's a, that, that, that's an interesting one isn't it but again it's something which people will no doubt pick up on as as, as the whole thing evolves yeah uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a, an academic somewhere in a learned institution who is going to make their whole doctoral thesis about how this new etiquette of online meetings of, of online training uh, actually uh, emerges yeah, um, yeah just, I'm, just I'm just sure people have about, submitted their applications already for that just a, a thought about uh, what you were saying um, you know some people uh, you were saying in effect are auditory learners they sit reasonably passively and they listen to what a trainer is saying and that's fine that's their preferences as as, uh, as auditory learners others you know perhaps a less driven by their ears and more driven by their eyes and a, a visual learners and of course some people a lot of people certainly in some training situations are you know hands-on kinesthetic learners uh, um, and of course that's the bit that at the moment uh, online training can't can't easily replicate so if you were doing i don't know cpr training or fire extinguisher training for a health and safety course yeah, um, that isn't something that would easily translate into into this kind of uh, interaction. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the training, which is, uh, as you were saying, is more about practical skills. That, 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 that's, a, that's, a different, uh, that's a different beast altogether, isn't it? Um, yeah, if you were gonna do first aid training and had to practice CPR on a, 
on one of the uh, those fantastic dummies they have. You, you obviously you couldn't do that online. But if we if we park the whole idea to one side of um, of learning styles and just just put that out of the way for the moment, um, and what we have to do online is to provide as many different avenues as we as we possibly can. Um, you're never going to have a group of people who all think they learn in the same way because you know, it, it, the whole thing is uh, the whole thing's open to debate at the moment anyway. But um, I just think that uh, it, it's getting the challenge now, of course, from a trainer's point of view, is getting that uh, that variety in, isn't it? Uh, this is what you're alluding to, I think. So um, you know, using video clips, giving people the chance to to go off and discuss things, and having different people. Um, Having different people presenting as well, I think, is uh, is really quite important because do you want to sit through uh, an hour of the same person's voice? It's, it's different in a bigger auditorium, I think, than uh, there's a certain sort of flatness. I'm finding a certain sort of flatness with uh, with the online presentation. So it would be nice now to have somebody else coming in. So if we had my, my mate over here, old redhead over there, <laughs> if he could, if he or she could actually uh, comment, that would be uh, that would be good. Um, okay, you've got a bit, yeah. was, but you can't you can't do that without expecting me to ask you a question. Who is uh, who is or what is the red uh, the redhead there? Ah, uh, the, the the redhead the redhead goes back a really long way. If we had an hour and a half, I could tell you a story about um, an expedition we did to Iceland back in the mid eighties. And that's where. That's where the yeah, you, can, you, 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 can, you can make your own story up from that. <laughs> I think we better we better leave it there. Stories of redheads in, in Iceland. That sounds all very uh, Icelandic, kind of um, yeah. Nordic drama. -y. Uh, um, sorry, Rich. I just say. Right. Uh, um, I think what happens is that when um, you know when somebody's speaking, uh, inevitably uh, our attention span begins to drop uh, in a presentation. And the reason very often that news programs are double headed, uh, the, the background that I came from, uh, mm. is that, you know, two hands, are, two sets of hands are better than one. It div divides the labor for a busy news program. But when the next presenter comes along, people automatically perk up. So attention drops and then in comes a new presenter and attention spikes and then it begins to drop and then they swap the presenter. So it's just a device for keeping uh, people more attentive than they would otherwise be. And I think yeah, that does perhaps transfer into a training situation where you yes, might be able to hold an audience for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour uh, as a good face-to-face um, -face presenter. But would you be able to do that in a, an online situation? Perhaps, no. perhaps less so. Uh, I, 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 I've always thought that the, um, the the structure of the news programmes is really effective as well. Uh, and again, it's something which people need to think about when they're uh, presenting online. So that you, you you tell people these these are the headlines. You tell them a few bits and pieces about the headlines, and then you say, and then we'll go back to them just to remind ourselves, and then we move on again. You know, so it's, it's that it's that different pace, isn't it? It's not. It's not linear. You, you're needing to be going backwards and forwards, reminding people of what uh, the main story was. Yeah, and then and a roundup of today's news, that kind of thing, a roundup of what we've done so far. Um, I think there's, there's even more of a, of a need for that in the online environment. You mean again, that's something package, which uh, we'll have to stuff up into, into bite sized chunks. So if you think about. Very much, uh, and, and really quite short ones too. Yeah, I mean, if you think about a news program, a news package would be two, two and a half minutes long. That would be quite long these days. You know, very Absolutely. often the, the style for a minute, minute and a half long package, which uh, may be one of two or three in quick succession on the same subject, you know, something like coronavirus or, or, or COVID-19 or whatever. But, but uh, each chunk of information is, is fairly finite and, and assumes that people can perhaps swallow that, whereas they wouldn't be able to swallow seven minutes in, in, in one go. Three times two is better than one times six. Yeah, good way of putting it, I think. Yeah, I was, I was trying to, um, uh, a colleague from uh, who I work alongside at uh, a company called Open Genius, uh, a colleague, uh, Sharon, and uh, Sharon Curry's done a lot of, um, a lot of big audience online uh, presenting. And she was saying that it, from a trainer's point of view, the the online version is really tiring. It can be more. It's a, she, she's finding it a lot more tiring than speaking in front of a, a room with a lot of delegates in it. I think that, that that's interesting because 
that uh, there, there's the, the added stresses and strains of the, of the technical side as well. Whereas, you know, if, if you've got 100 people in a room and the projector breaks, well, you can still talk, can't you, for a while until someone from IT comes to, to, to sort it out. But um, I was uh, part of it, I was a delegate in, a, in quite a large uh, live webinar the other week and the sound went down after about two minutes and the whole thing was scrapped. Yeah, and they did, they, then they just sent out um, a recorded version that they put together later in the day. So, yeah, the, it's, the, it's, it's having that extra concern in your mind, I think, from a trainer's point of view, um, which can just add to the stresses and strains, which maybe in some way sort of um, impinges on your ability to, to put your, your training forward. Yeah, I mean, we do have uh, with uh zoom the ability to uh, have a, a virtual uh, whiteboard um, and we've got a touch screen uh, here so i can use my finger to uh my finger to write but of course you're absolutely right that that's a virtual uh, flip chart uh, not um an actual flip chart uh, and that still doesn't work if the internet connection goes down so a plan b which i always encourage my uh, presentation skills trainees to have you know how are you going to manage to give this presentation if the powerpoint projector breaks down if the venue sound goes off having a plan b is fine in that face-to-face -face situation but there can be no plan B. If the power goes off, your internet connection goes down, if the sound stops working. Uh, no. And I guess, sadly, you know, those things may be beyond your control as a training company, as a trainer, but of course they do nonetheless reflect on you. Uh, and uh, that, that I think is something that perhaps also has to be built into people's expectation, built into the, um, if you like, the etiquette that online meetings sometimes will go wrong and it's not a reflection on uh, any of the delegates or any of the trainers it's just yeah. that it's not as robust as we'd like it to be yet particularly at the moment because everybody's doing it and uh, because everybody's doing it um there's an awful lot of demand on internet uh, connections and on what you know what's called bandwidth i think Anyway, look, um, thank you very much indeed uh, for your time, um, Bill. Um, are you looking well, forward to getting back to being on the road, to taking a plane across or however you get across to Geneva? Are you really missing those face-to-face -face sessions or are um, you really think this is the way forward? The, yes, it's difficult to say at the moment. I mean, um, I, I think we're all now just beginning, well, I'm certainly beginning to feel the effects of, uh, of the lockdown. Just be nice to get out anywhere, won't it? Uh, so the, you know, the thought of driving down to Bristol Airport and flying out to Geneva now just sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, but uh, putting that putting that to one side because it's a very social event as well, uh, because uh, the master trainer people are uh, amazingly generous. Um, it's just that, uh, yeah, as going back to what we was what we were talking about right at the beginning. I think it, this situation now will really kind of weed out some of the uh, the, uh, the the less effective face-to-face -face training that we've had. So it will save people a lot of money, uh, and they'll still get the same information. But there there is um, uh, a big danger that we're going to lose a lot of the uh, really effective face-to-face -face training uh, benefits. So hopefully, it'll it, when we get back to normal, it'll. Um, It'll separate, it'll separate the two out. We'll have some really, really good online stuff, which is appropriate for online and appropriate uh, training for face-to-face. -face. Um, Bill, thank you so much. That seems like a really good place to end. Yes, the sort of evolutionary pressure, if you like, uh, evolve or die uh, in business terms uh, has been our guiding mantra uh, at ACM Training. And, and we've probably done more to develop our online offering in in two or three weeks than we might have done ordinarily in, in two or three years. So it is a great, uh, a great agent uh, for change. Let me uh, just tell you what's coming up on next week's uh, webinar. We're running it for the duration of the uh, pandemic and the, and the lockdown. Next week, we'll be talking to the president-elect of the Chartered Institute of Public Relations, uh, Mandy Pierce. 
and she's going to give us the lowdown on how local government comms has been coping with the coronavirus uh, pandemic, an awful lot of work going on to communicate with uh, local residents from a local government perspective and some really good practice emerging that she's going to be talking about and uh, talking about some of the pressures that her uh, local gov uh, comms colleagues are, are under. Perhaps, um, you know, we've been talking a lot about heroes in the NHS, carers, uh, bin, bin lorry drivers and, and, and emptiers and, and, and shelf stackers and everything. But, you know, what about all of those unsung heroes in, in local government comms? So we'll be able to celebrate their achievements in next week's webinar here on the ACM training YouTube channel from 11 o'clock in the morning at UK time and of course we'll deal with any questions that you ask us ask the owls at acmtraining.co.uk is the email address for your questions for your suggestions uh, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel and then you won't miss an episode and of course it's available after the live stream uh, as a recorded highlights package uh, in a couple of hours time so thanks for watching have a great Easter. Uh, if you've done the dress up Friday thing, as I have, well then post those pictures to social and show us just how nice you look in your titfa. Until next time, bye-bye.